It's the phone call that you all dread. The phone call that tells you that the person you love most in this world has been killed. And it's the phone call that changes your life forever. And I received this phone call on the very first day, not the first day, okay. Um, I received this phone call while I was in a routine registrar day. You know, you're in the, in the middle of teaching and your phone rings and you go, oh, don't you hate that? And you switch it to silence, hoping no one would notice. And then it rings again a few minutes later. It's, uh, I'm just wondering whether my slides are actually on the 20 second mark or whether this is timing. So I need to move them? Okay, no worries, I will know now, okay. Sorry? No, no, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so as a routine registrar day when this happened, I was actually talking about the risks while traveling while pregnant, using my mother's example um, of who's traveling while heavily pregnant with me, uh, and my phone rang again, and I turned it off this time, really embarrassed by the interruption. When I turned the phone on seven, uh, about an hour later, I had seven missed calls. The days and the weeks that followed were a bit of a blur, but there was one thing that kept, kept recurring, one thought that was really crystal clear, and that is, why is it that a 39-year-old doctor, healthy and vibrant, got mowed down by a car on his morning jog? It just made no sense. A neurologist and a, a, a psychiatrist from Austria, Viktor Frankl, survived the Holocaust. And he said in his book, in some ways, suffering ceases to be suffering the moment it finds a meaning. The human's need to find meaning in things is ubiquitous and can be expressed in various ways. A slightly less eloquent way that it's expressed is with Avenue Q, where it says something like, a purpose, it's that little flame that lights the fire under your ass. Purpose, it keeps you going strong like a car with a full tank of gas. So when I learned that my partner was killed by an elderly driver who had been certified as fit to drive just three weeks before the accident by his doctor, despite serious concerns about his safety by his family, it made me angry at first, um, and then it made me passionate. It uh, lit the fire under my ass, so to speak. So I decided I was really wanted to increase awareness of GPs about the importance of assessing, assessing fitness to drive. I talked about my situation on the GPDU Facebook group um, and received lots of support and encouragement there. And then I spread the, the concept more widely by making my first ever Petra Kucha and uploading it to YouTube. The, this talk started with my, my story as a registrar of being bullied by an elderly female driver uh, who was who I signed off as fit to drive, although I really shouldn't have, because of my concerns that it would have significant impacts on her independence living in a rural area. A few weeks later, I discovered or I heard that she died behind the wheel and I was absolutely panicked thinking that I was going to get hauled all over, the coal, over the coals. But to my relief, she actually died of a CVA after having a perfect parallel park outside the local bakery. I then go on to describe the situation of my partner's death. He was staying at LA with friends. He'd They'd gone to work, he'd talked to me on Skype for an hour of me just bitching about a work problem, and then he'd gone out for a morning run. It was all very ordinary, until he was hit by a driver. And this driver did not see, the, he claimed he didn't see the red light. Um, my partner was travelling on the other side of the intersection and was hit and killed by this partner, by, by the driver, when he mistook the brake pedal for the accelerator. So my talk has received a fair, a fair bit of uh, attention, which has been great. It's got about 4,400 hits on YouTube, which is 
far less than any kind of cute cat video, but still not bad. Um, it's been featured on various online platforms such as the Kevin MD blog in the US, on um, Meducation, which is a UK blog, on the MGA Doctors Portal, and also um, on the world headquarters of Pecha Kucha, the, the official website, which is based in Tokyo. So online video is a great way of spreading information, but there's something really special about face-to-face -face delivery. And I've been lucky to be able to talk about snippets of my story in, with audiences such as I am doing today. Many of these opportunities were presented by GP Synergy and I'm really, really grateful for their support and uh, of me during this process. And I've had the opportunity of talking about assessing fitness as drive to registrar groups throughout New South Wales. Now, assessing fitness as drive for registrars is usually a bit of a ho-hum top type topic. Um, not particularly interesting or sexy. And the sessions that I run start with the nuts and bolts, the usual type session you'd present on this topic to registrars, but then it ends with my Pecha Kucha video. It's a very intense process and I found it too hard to even be in the room initially. Even now, I find it hard to watch people's faces as they watch the video but I can feel the mood of the room change from sort of apathy about the situation before it starts to real engagement. Um, and this particular slide where I discussed it, only his ashes came home to Australia, really packs one of the big emotional punches. So my partner's ashes is now buried at the base of this tree. It's uh, along with the ashes of our two daughters. And Every day is still a big struggle. Um, I don't like to admit it, even to myself. Uh, I have to keep reminding myself that losing your family is not something you can just bounce back from and that it's okay to be not okay. But I'm heartened by my friends and by my colleagues. I'm really grateful for the many doctors now around the world and also um, members of a general public who have contacted me and saying that my story has really affected the way that they have seen this issue and that they are taking extra care with assessing the fitness to drive of their patients. And I'm very grateful for my many friends who continue to send me pictures of rainbows and loving thoughts and support. And thanks to all of you.